what's going on guys welcome to another video of the day and we're going about to, we're about to talk about something very very important once again shout out to all the people who leave the well-constructed comments and what i want to talk about today is this i want to talk about money i want to talk about money and one of the things that I want to discuss is the habit of money. So let's kind of go through this really quickly. I'm going to show you that this is not, I do have some play money. I do have some play money. This is actual real money. So that's one. Will it focus? That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. That's six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. All right, we're going to stop there for a moment. That's one thousand dollars cash. Eighty percent of the people in this country don't have one thousand dollars cash available to them, whether it's in their pocket or their bank account. 80% of the people. We're about to take the ante up. One, that's 11. That's 12. It's 13. Fourteen. Fifteen. 16, 17, all right, $1,700. This represents more money than the average person can get their hands on in 30 days. Now, we're gonna talk about why I set the case. And we're about to actually go back in time and talk to when I was just like everyone else. There was a point in time that this would have seemed like a huge sum of money. Let me go ahead and clarify and state for the record. $1,700 is not a lot of money in any sense of the matter. It's not. Um, this is walking around money. This is, this is pocket change for me. And I was at a point where it would have been inconceivable for me to literally have 1700 bucks. It, it would have been, um, it would have been a fantasy. It would have been, um, For me, and I go back to when I used to work at Northside Hospital, this would have been like a refund check. That would have been the only way, but here, here's the thing. Because I was working so much, I took all of the exemptions, I didn't get a refund check. This would have been a refund check for me, right? So how did I make the journey from going to not having this to, how many times, how often have I been showing you guys ATM receipts and cash? I've been showing you this for years. So I have developed the habit of hanging on to money. Now, 
I used to be a person who could not hang on to money. Uh, money used to go through my fingers like water. So habits, behaviors, habits, behaviors. This is going to be the first thing that we're going to address in the, on, in the training that we're going to start this month. Two, three. We're going to discuss habits and behaviors. Now, I once upon a time was homeless and I ended up homeless not because of the nefarious actions of my ex-wife. No, I ended up homeless because I didn't have this. I had no money. I did not have the habit or the behavior of saving money. At any point, I can go to the bank and pull out thousands of dollars. It's been that way for close to a decade where I've always had money. Now there are videos here on YouTube that will talk about, take your money out the bank. You shouldn't have cash. You should invest. Once again, here at the Institute of Economic Thought, I have shown you by the numbers that 75% of Americans make $35,000 a year. Actually having cash would be the 75% of Americans, it would be their best friend to have actual cash in the bank or on their person. It would be in their benefit. So how did I make the journey from being a regular person to uh, having this? Uh, I'm about to give y'all a little fun fact. When I was a kid, I used to cut grass, right? And people would give me money and I used to hate old money. I used to hate um, dirty money. So what I would do, I would go in the kitchen because you know, money is cloth. It's not paper, it's cloth. And I would wash my money. I would wash my money and then using Dawn dish detergent, wash my money. And then I would take out an iron and press it. Cause I want it, cause like, I don't like dirty crumpled bills. I always like fresh bills. And that was a habit that I developed, but I didn't take it to the next level because like literally I've had a thousand bucks in my wallet. I actually started spending cash in the car rental business because I would run into tow truck drivers who wouldn't take credit cards. And there was many reasons that I had to spend cash in the car rental business. But once again, let's talk about the journey where I was a regular, normal person to the person who has the ability to hold on to thousands, to hundreds of thousands, in some years, millions of dollars. First of all, it started off very simply. I did not make an overnight change. I did not do this overnight. This wasn't a quick, fast hurry. It was a process. And the process started with me getting a part-time job and saving all of the money from that part-time job which was very, very, very difficult. So I sat down one morning, I was in the boarding house and I was like, how'd you end up here? And I had a come to Jesus meeting with myself and it was like, you had no money. So I went out, got me a second job and it was hard. It was hard because I was used to spending my money. I was used to my money just going like that. So the first three months I struggled because I was making about $400 per month and I had 1200 bucks in the bank. And I remember once again, I was living in a boarding house and there was this leather jacket at Macy's. It was brown, it was slick and it was 1100 bucks. I almost bought that leather jacket in Macy's for 1100 bucks 
and I was living in a boarding house. See, the urge to spend money was so strong in me that I was living in the boarding house. I had no investments. My credit was shot and I was tempted to blow not one, not two, but three months of salary on one leather jacket. And then I remember I went to the bank and I got all the money out and I headed to Macy's and I was looking at that jacket and I was feeling on it and I was just sitting there like, and I was really at, I was in a fight with myself because there was one of me is like, man, take that money back to the bank. Another man, get this jacket, you'll be fresh. So I just looked at the jacket one last time. I felt it because it felt so good. And then I left Macy's. I went and put the money back in the bank. And then I just, then I discovered that I couldn't tempt myself. So I wouldn't go in stores at all. I wouldn't look at stuff. And you know, this was before the internet. So that was the struggle that I had. Now, going almost a year later, about nine months later, I get laid off. And I had $4,000 in the bank. That was enable enough money to sustain me while I didn't have a job, pay my bills, buy food. And I almost blew it because I wanted that leather jacket. So when I talk to y'all, I don't come from a position of someone who hasn't been there. I know what it's like. And I know to develop the habit to hold on to money is very, very hard. In that first year of making money, not spending it was a challenge for me. The first three months was super, super hard. Then about month six, it got easier. Month nine, <clears throat> I didn't even think about it, but it literally took me a year to learn how to hold on to money. And this is one of the reasons that I am where I'm at today because of what I did way back when, way back when. So guys, I don't show this to flex because for some people, the moist men crowd, I'm flex and I'm bragging because I got $1,700. Like once again, in the grand scheme of things, $1,700 ain't nothing. It's nothing. But this represents more money, more money than the average person in America has at their disposal. And I'm talking 75%, 80% of people in America could not get their hands on 1700 bucks in 30 days. It's sad. I feel that everyone should have at least $10,000 in the bank. Everybody. I don't care if you make minimum wage. Like, once again, I wasn't making big money when I saved this $4,000. I wasn't making big money. But that was the foundational lesson training aspect of me being able to have money and hold on to it. And this creates what I like to call income velocity. Income velocity is when you have money that you don't need to live on. This is one of the biggest tricks that so many people have a problem to get to that point where you have surplus income. This, I guess this would be considered surplus income. Um, I paid rent today. I paid uh, some insurance and I like, once again, like I don't have a direct savings plan anymore because of income velocity. I don't really sit down and like, I'm going to try to save this, this. What I do is I make money in chunks and then I take a chunk and I put it here and I take a chunk and I put it here. This is how I have been living for years. I don't have a traditional um, savings plan. Um, I don't do that. I just learned that 
because my goal is to live so like my means are here but not, i live like down here i mean it's kind of ridiculous because um there's a penthouse in this building and it's like ten thousand dollars a month i could get in i could swing that i could swing it if i wanted to but once again i don't even know if i'm gonna stay here so it doesn't really make any sense for me to go ahead and upgrade to a ten thousand dollar per month apartment well, I don't know if I'm going to stay here. I might do it. I might not. But I don't have a direct savings plan. I have a lifestyle plan. And my goal is whenever I make money, X amount of dollars gets put to the side automatically. I don't like I have a month where I make 300,000, 270 to 280 will get bit put to the side. It will get put to the side because I don't need it to live. See, that's one of the, <clears throat> the biggest things. Creating a situation where you have more money than you need to live. Like, once again, this is the first of the month, Bones, Thugs, and Harmony. It's the first of the month, first of the month. And I paid a lot of, I actually, I don't pay bills on, like I paid rent because it was due. And essentially, I can't pay rent before it's due or I would, but most of my bills, I just pay them as they come. I don't wait until I get paid. And that's another thing that I'm out of. I don't wait until I get paid to do things. Like recently, I bought this camera. I have another camera. I bought a drone, 12,500 12, bucks. I bought it when I wanted it. I didn't have to wait to buy it. I didn't have to wait. And this is one of the things that's, you know, the first section because I'm, I'm gonna do the, the training in sections and it's gonna be called home economics. Because this is one of the fallacies that many uh, business owners make. They will create a business, they will increase their income and they will never learn how to hold on to money. They will just take more money and do the same thing they were doing with 30,000 that they'll do the same thing with 300,000. And at the end of the day, when you look at them, they have no assets, they, have no, they, they, they just have nothing. So one of the things, and it's about habits and behaviors. This lesson that I learned like 23 years, excuse me, 23 years ago, 23 years ago, I learned this lesson. And it was one of the best lessons that I've ever learned because, um, fun fact, I was gonna go to the bank and I wrote a check for $100,000, right? And I was gonna try to cash it. And the, the teller, she knew me and she's just like, boo, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that. So I was writing checks to make the bank bounce. And one of the things that you have got to understand, and once again, I don't show this to you to brag or to boast, it's just training and information to allow you to know what new behaviors you need to develop. You need to learn how to hold on to money. I literally have weeks. I don't spend any money outside of gas and food. I'm not out buying clothes. I'm not, out, I'm just not. I like literally, I would have a month where I won't spend any money above and beyond my living expenses. That's a consistent thing. I could do that for months because I've learned how to hold on to money and holding on to money is part of managing money. And this is why I don't come to you guys with this millionaire game. Because here's the thing, my good people, the vast majority of the people watching this channel are not millionaires. And I'm about to say something not to uh, piss on your dreams, but the vast majority of people who are watching this channel will never become millionaires. It ain't in the cards. Now you can become a corporate citizen where you make 250,000 uh, a year, that could be in the cards. But the reality of the average person, once again, I say this, the average person becoming a millionaire is quite slim. You wanna know why? Because being a millionaire ain't average. It's not average. And one of the first things you have to do is learn how to hold on to this. You gotta learn how to hold on to money. You gotta learn how to hold on to money. Because as long as you keep spending all the money you make, you will never ever be close to being rich. 
And I'm not talking about pathological frugality. I am, I drive a Porsche. I live in a high rise. I drive a Porsche in the BMW. So I'm not talking about pathological frug frugality because I am not a frugal person in any sense of the, the measure. I believe in abundance. I am a big believer in abundance because the more that I give, the more that I get. And I'm not talking about being frugal. I'm talking about learning how to manage your money, learning how to manage your money. Shout out to short change. When I took the money out the ATM, I thought of you and I left a receipt on, on the ATM machine. <laughs> Cause short change be taking money out the ATM and leaving money in there. But guys, this video, and you need to watch this video two or three times, is the most pivotal aspect of getting wealthy. Let me say this again. The ability to hold on to money, hold on to money, hold on to money, and the, the ability to manage money, and the ability to create income velocity. Income velocity is where you want to get. And you don't have to become a millionaire to get to income velocity. Let's say you and your wife make $60,000 a year. You create a small business that makes 30. That can create income velocity, creating a situation where money comes in faster than you can spend it. See, that's one of the things. This is something that I have. This is how I have lived for years with income velocity. I, I make money so fast that it just stacks up. Hence the $400,000 for the car rental business. That was money that I was paying myself that was literally just sitting in my personal checking account. I didn't need it. And that's where you need to be. You need to be at a point where your living expenses make up such a small representation of your overall income that you can achieve income velocity. And like I said, this is why I don't come at you with millionaire game and hustlers and all this other stuff. Because the vast majority of you folks who are watching these videos are average folk. And my goal is to turn you from an average person into an atypical person that can hold on to money. When you can hold on to money, oh man, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. Like I said, the ability for me to get a job and put that $400 away. And once again, it was hard. And this is why I laugh when people are like, I'm going to invest three, 400 bucks a month for 30 years. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. But you want to create income velocity. You want to learn how to hold on to money and you want to, and I'm going to do another video talking about how to attract money, because this is one of the things I have noticed. When I have money, it tracks, it attracts more money. And when I was dead broke, that attracted being dead broke. So give me a little time. I'm going to get the training and stuff up. But once again, this is a pivotal video. You need to watch it a few times because learning how to hold on, to hold on to money is a foundational wealth building behavior that will serve you for the rest of your life. The ability to hold on to money. All right, that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.